everyone, so I know that this is a late update, I'm actually 34 weeks tomorrow, absolutely insane, um, but I knew I had a consultant appointment today to talk about the fact that I'm on aspirin and everything, so I wanted to wait until I'd had that um, so I could kind of update you. So it is, suppose, you know, 33 week, 34 week update. Um, oh, I am quite out of breath, I just sprinted up the stairs. Um, but I have noticed that has been going in sort of day-to-day -day activities. I'm not as out of breath because I do feel like she's dropped a little bit and they did actually say that she is a bit further down now when they examined me. Um, so symptoms have basically been very similar to the last few weeks. It's just getting really hard. Um, I'm having um, a lot of backache, a lot of sort of period pains. Um, feels quite sore to walk with the SPD but it's not too bad at the moment I'm sort of managing it heartburn is just through the roof it's just all the time I go through so much Gaviscon not been sleeping that well I actually hadn't had um, any cramping at all um, I know sometimes you get leg cramps I hadn't had any at all until last night I went to roll over in bed and as soon as I move my leg it just cramped up in my calf muscle um, so it looks like that is going to be a new symptom in my life which I'm not looking forward to my appetite is back um, I know when I had my cold I didn't really have much of an appetite but it's definitely back I'm starving all the time now I don't know if that's good or bad I was moaning when I didn't have an appetite but now I'm moaning that I'm eating all the time and growing so much but I know that she is growing as well so um, that's good Everything's measuring on track when they do my fundal height and my midwife's despite the scare that we had a few weeks ago or last week was it. Um, I think someone just measured me completely wrong. I'm not sure how they got it six weeks wrong but yeah. Itching has actually calmed down as well but I've actually gone gluten free and I think that's why. Um, I actually feel so much happier and have more energy as well going gluten free so I'm going to stick to that. Yeah that's kind of helped the itching and helped my tiredness and everything a lot. Don't get me wrong I'm still tired, I could still sleep all the time but I'm not like debilitatingly tired if that makes sense. Um, and I feel a lot more happy as well. I don't know if gluten affects your mood or anything but I was feeling really down. Again that could just be hormones, maybe they've just switched of swelling actually when I first got my engagement ring it was two sizes too big and now it barely moves um, so I am definitely swollen I had to take my ring off here because it was really really tight I nearly didn't get it off um, so yeah I'm definitely swelling a little bit but it's nothing too much although I do feel like my face is just really puffy which is horrible but never mind I am pregnant that's it in terms of sort of symptoms and I'm going to tell you a little bit of an embarrassing story which I wasn't going to share but it's quite funny when you look back at it and I think again it's a normal sort of pregnancy problem. Um, so I have been noticing that I have been leaking a little bit and I, obviously I thought it was just weak pelvic floor muscles and everything so I've been using my Lights by Tenor and everything. But then I was at my friend's house yesterday and I had just been for a wee, came downstairs, I sat on the sofa and I felt like a gush and it was quite a lot, like three to four tablespoons of liquid. It was clear because I went back up to sort of sort myself out, it was clear liquid, it was just like water, it didn't smell like wee at all and I thought my waters had gone. I was really sure that that was what my instinct was telling me and I kind of panicked a little bit. Um, and yeah my underwear was soaked I had to change them I had to come home and change them I rang the labour ward and she wasn't sure what it was either so she said to go in to get checked um, I didn't actually get in until this happened about half eleven in the morning um, and I stayed at my friend's for a little bit kind of talking to her about what I should do if she thinks it's my waters and blah 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 um, and then I came home and I actually put Sienna down for a nap because well, I'm just going to see if any more leaks out or anything but I didn't have anything else um, but I decided to ring the labour ward anyway just in case and she said to go in that was about half past two but we didn't actually get in until about half five because I had to sort out Sienna and everything because they're not allowed on the labour ward children um, 
So yeah, I didn't get checked until about half five and they checked my cervix and everything and it was closed. Closed, there was no like sign that any waters were leaking or anything. Um, but they did a swab to check for infection as well. Um, so basically no one's no, no one really knows what it was. I could have just weed myself, but I feel like that's very unlikely because I just emptied my bladder and it didn't look or smell like wee or anything. I know that's really gross and TMI, but sorry. So anyway, they monitored the baby just in case and actually when I was on the machine, I told her I was having period pain and like the back squeezes I got in the beginning of labour with Sienna. So she put me on the machine to monitor baby's heart rate and movement and also any contractions or tightenings that I was having. And she did actually say the machine was picking up that I was having tightenings that were stronger than Braxton Hicks but obviously not as strong as contractions. So she called them tightenings um, and I could feel them, it's like my back squeezing. Um, so she wasn't really sure why I was having those. Um, so they did a pre-term labour test so that kind of tells them if I'm likely to go into labour prematurely within the next seven days and that came back negative which is good which means there's not much likelihood of me going into labour for the next seven days but they can't tell me after that so, so yeah I'm still having them today as well and paracetamol isn't really help Ugh. Paracetamol isn't really helping and I could feel them in the night as well. They're not strong at all but they are just, I don't know, it's more than just backache because they come and then they go. They are in like contractions but they're not, um, there's no like pattern or anything to them though, they're just really random. I can go 20 minutes without one and then I can get two in five minutes. So they're really random, they're not regularly, they're not really hurting as such, I can just feel them. Um, so basically I just need to keep an eye on that, keep an eye on her movements and cross my fingers I don't go into labour early, which I don't think is going to happen, but it's just weird to know that I am actually having, any, having sort of mild contractions I suppose. Um, so I have actually been using my belly bandit, this is the Upsy Belly. Um, and it has the little gel pack in that you heat up. Um, so I've done a blog post on this ages ago, I'll link it down below. Um, but you basically warm this up and put it in the pouch and then put it around you. And it's actually been really helping. It feels so nice when you've got back pain to have something warm and hot on it. Um, so yeah, I've been using that and it's been really, really helping, so that's been good. Yeah, that was another bit of drama yesterday at the hospital, I just feel like I've been in the hospital all the time. And then we were back again today for my consultant appointment. Originally they told me that I could take aspirin up until 37 weeks and then I would have to stop because of the risk of hemorrhaging if I went into labour. However, today he has said that he has revised it and because it's such a low dose, the pros outweigh the cons. He doesn't want me to stop it at 37 weeks because then the baby might be in trouble because that's what's keeping the oxygen in the placenta and getting to her, which is what I was worried about. I was really worrying about stopping it because I didn't want her to stop getting oxygen, obviously. But at the same time, Warren was worried about me not stopping it because he doesn't want me to hemorrhage when I give birth. So we kind of cleared it up with the doctor that that's not going to happen. He said the pros definitely outweigh the cons. The likelihood of my blood being too thin when I go into labour and me hemorrhaging is really, really slight. Um, pretty much the same as, as if I wasn't on aspirin. So I'm going to continue taking aspirin up until I'm in labour, which I'm really, really happy about because I was so worried that once I stopped the aspirin, she'd stop getting oxygen and we would have problems and maybe lose her. I kept having dreams that I had a stillborn which is horrendous and really upset me and really made me worry so I'm really really happy that I can just continue taking it because I feel like that's what's keeping her alive so um, yeah I'm really happy that I can just continue with that and I've just said happy a million times but <laughs> it's better than crying. So I think that's all for symptoms and everything and little updates on my appointments and I'll just go ahead and show you my belly. 
so she's definitely grown um, so this is like I said I'm 34 weeks tomorrow and I do feel like she's dropped a little bit um, she's not engaged yet I don't think but she is still head down and her feet are all up here and I'm still quite pointy as well but I was with Sienna the whole way through there we go so that is my belly so thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in my next video don't forget to like and subscribe bye